Hello and welcome to Shape Up Your LinkedIn with Engineering New Zealand. I'm Natasha, the engagement advisor for the young engineer and student space. I'm just going to go over a couple of housekeeping um, things before we get into the webinar. So uh, if you can't hear me or see me, then you just need to try exit and re-entering the room. Uh, the webinar, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the event. But if you do have questions that you want to ask, we just ask that you type them into the chat bar. Um, and then if we find that the question has already been answered by the presentation, uh, we won't answer it at the end. Now, um, I just want to let you know that uh, this event will be recorded and shared along with the slides. Uh, if you have uh, any follow-up questions, there'll be an opportunity to email them through to us. Um, but without further ado, I'll um, invite Lachlan McNeil to begin his uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natasha. How, how great to be here with Engineering New Zealand. And I've been very much involved uh, throughout my career with Engineering New Zealand. And it's always a pleasure to see young graduates coming out and doing some smart things that the world needs. So well done. So as Natasha mentioned, I'm my name is Lachlan McNeil and I am a technical recruiter. I started off in electrical engineering, but I moved into recruitment probably about 17 years ago. I look for candidates in three key areas, which is engineering, architecture and environmental. And I deal with mainly senior roles, but what I can do today is I can help you. I'll take you through what I look for. So there'll be two parts to this webinar. The first part is showing you just deep down what I do as a recruiter, all the steps I take. And you'll be able to take some notes and recognize some of the things in that process. And secondly, I'll go down specifically on what you can do. Okay, so as we mentioned, there's going to be a checklist and there's going to be some, some slides and some links sent out afterwards. So please ask some questions, but many of these we may have covered already and hopefully you'll be getting those. So let's just move on. I'm going to be focusing on what you should focus on. There's a lot to think about with LinkedIn. Uh, and, and I'm not going to cover everything at all. I'm not going to kind of cover the settings in the background of LinkedIn. I'm not going to cover marketing. I'm just going to cover what you need to do with your profile to get picked. And, and of course, to avoid being overlooked, which is the key. So uh, just as a reminder, we've got checklists coming up. The links will be following up and we'll have questions now and later. And I'm just going to cover your profile. OK, so what is LinkedIn? So let's start with the basics. So LinkedIn is really three key things from my point of view. First of all, for me, even as a recruiter and for you as a professional, it's a showcase for your career and skills. And if someone wants to know, wants your skills for a reason and for design or whatever, they can get in touch with you. They can also check your credentials. So quite often I'll get an application, I'll think, oh, who is this? Let's have a look on LinkedIn to see what there is. Secondly, it's social media for business. It's keeping in touch. I often track people, I track companies and people, and I get updates every day telling me what's happening in the world of engineering. Thirdly, and this is what we're going to talk about today, it's a search engine for employers and recruiters, and it helps you to be found. Now, of course, you can think, why, why for me as a graduate? Well, I can tell you, as a recruiter, it's absolutely vital for graduates and job seekers new to the market. And the reason is simple. You're not on our databases. You're not in our existing networks. The only way we're going to find you is either if you apply for a job or we search for you and find you that way. We have many databases, thousands and hundreds of thousands of contacts, but you're highly unlikely to be on there if you're just graduating. Secondly, you can refine and expand on that as you get experience. You don't have to wait till you've finished a job. You can add project details as you go. So it's kind of always up to date. And as well as I mentioned before, is that people use that to verify and to clarify resumes. I've worked in many consultancy roles. When someone comes in the door, so here's the name, I hear people clicking away. What are they doing? They're looking at the LinkedIn profile to see who this person is. Now, as I mentioned today, I'm going to be mainly dealing with the recruiter's point of view. So 
one thing we do have to recognize when I, as a recruiter, I generally look for two types of roles. The first one is a permanent role. In other words, that's somebody who's looking for a member of staff to join them and stay for many years. The other type of role was the temporary candidate, somebody to come in and solve a problem. There's a pain in the business, either they're running behind on their deadline or they need some special skills just for a short time. And there's opportunities, opportunities in both of these. And graduates often forget the temporary candidate market. I'm not going to dig deep on it, but I will draw your attention to that. Now, I'm going to go through the recruitment process. It's important you know what I'm looking for or what I'm given to, to find and then how I go about doing that. So I'm going to go through the actual recruitment process quickly and then I'm going to go through my search sequence. And through then, as I'm going through, you'll find out what I search for, what piques my interest, what I actually look for in each particular profile, and then I'm going to get look at some opportunities for you to stand out. And then we're going to have some examples. We always love examples. So this is a chart, a very quick chart of the recruitment process. Typically, I'm contacted by a client. And let's just take an example. Imagine I have a client in Auckland and they're looking, they, they do robotics in the farming industry in South America. They're looking for someone to help design a robotic arm and they come to me. So that's the core information, but also there's other information that I dig down and find out about. There's the team of five, so they're not huge, but they're not a one-man band. They use SolidWorks, okay, cool. But the management is often away. What could that mean to the person who's come on board? They have a passionate team. Mm -hmm. Passionate people tend to like passionate people. And then, but they're a bit disorganized. I notice that when I go in the office. So there's two levels there. One is the technical requirements, and the other one is the other stuff that really can make a difference. And how I like to find a person that's gonna help this company go where they want to go. So first, the next thing I do is establish the core needs. So in this case, it's mechanical electronics design or mechatronics design. What are the other needs? Well, an interest in horticulture, robotics, CAD skills, They've also got to be resourceful, tidy, and a good communicator. If the boss is away, they need to be able to call up and find them if they need to know some information. They also need to be proactive. They can't sit there and wait for the boss to come back from Brazil before they carry on their job. So you can see what I'm looking for that, to those two levels. Okay. Then I picture in my mind, even before I start tapping the keyboard, the ideal candidate. So we've really framed them those previous statements, but then I start to think about some of the other things. Uh, mechatronics or mechanical engineer, uh, probably going to be in Auckland, possibly looking for someone to relocate. Generally speaking, for graduates, we tend to look for people first in the city or the place that the job is based. Um, and then I start to look for these other things, a genuine interest in robotics, a possible interest in farming and agriculture. They've got to be resourceful, able to organise proactive those and, and also of course if they're in South America if they have Spanish or Portuguese language skills and it's an added bonus that's the icing on the cake. Then I consider for those indicators for what I mean by indicators the other things that show me in the profile that a person could be organized or resourceful I have to get in my mind what could that mean so in this case if they're resourceful maybe they've taken a couple of courses or they've added a portfolio to their profile that's quite resourceful able to organize. Maybe they've had a role in a club where they've had to organize things. Uh, and also, just the tidy format. For, I look at CVs and LinkedIn profiles, and a tidy format generally means a tidy person. A proactive communicator. If I see someone who's worked in a sales role, that generally tells me they're probably a good communicator, especially if there's been in New Zealand. Now, this is, I'm going to take you through my search process because at that stage, all I have is a picture in my mind. So now, I would generally look at a number of places, but I'm going to concentrate today on the LinkedIn, on the LinkedIn search. So typically, what I would do is I would start up a job, and I'll show you that on the next slide so you'll see what it looks like. I'm going to start at the beginning here, and I might do a core, just a search criteria. I can say mechatronics or a mechanical or robotics or an automation engineer in Auckland. Uh, and skills, I put design, robotics, SolidWorks, or some other CAD packages like Fusion 360 or Inventor or Creo. 
And then the experience, I, I might be looking for someone zero to two years, but I would also often look, search zero to four years because sometimes people work in another job. Okay, so I hope that helps. Then I save the appealing profiles. So I'm searching and now I'm popping them into a project that I have. And the project is called Robotics Engineers for Farmland or whatever. So then I'm, I save those appealing profiles. Now I'm not going to pick all of these top ones. I'm going to select the ones that are interesting to me. So I have a number of people who have interest in agriculture or Spanish language that are going to get to the top of my list. And the important thing you need to look at is look at this big jump here. And this really, this top number, that's conservative. It could be up to 500. So I'm taking it down to about 20, maximum 50 people I'm going to start to look at. Then from those, I'll often contact about half of them to see if they're interested. And it depends very much on the scarcity of the role. Of those half, we're about down to about 10 now, about five will come back to me and respond. So that's important. So you can see how there's quite a challenge. There's a big filter down here, but the biggest one is this five to one ratio here. If you can get past this first stage, and especially past the second stage, my goodness, you bet probably you're in the top 10%, and that's where you want to be. Okay, and then after that, if I get those responses, then I go to interview stage. And that's when I start to look at other stuff. That other stuff we're talking about, the genuine interest, that's when I dig down. So I search for um, kids' job titles. I open those, open those showing technical focus or a particular focus on the area we're looking at. I select those who stand out for the career aims. I just mentioned a thing called getting it here. If I have a profile that looks as though it's from the 1970s, uh, or it's got a terrible photograph and it doesn't quite make sense, that to me, that person doesn't quite get it. And this is especially important for graduates. They think, they, some of them think it may be not important, but the trouble is, Nobody rings you up and tells you they didn't use you because you had a poor profile. Just remember that. I don't want you to get paranoid, but that's important to remember. Uh, then I interview those for fit and mindset. That's important because you don't need to really state what your mindset and fit is on your LinkedIn profile so much. You can apply it, but don't go overboard. So here I am. I'm taking through an example here. I'm going to search on the previous example a core criteria, so it's job title, location, and skills, or the keywords. So let's just look at the see what it looks like on my screen. So this is my package. I, I use a package on LinkedIn called LinkedIn Recruiter. So down the left-hand side, you'll see how I search. There it is, Mechatronics Engineer, Auckland, SolidWorks, Robotics, and I put the year of graduation, and then down the bottom, I can put keywords. At this stage, I've got 81 possible candidates that come up under that first listing before I start specifying keywords. Down the right hand side, you'll see there's the, the, the search profile of the candidate. It's not the whole profile, it's just the search. You can see there's only a few lines. Now, why is that important? When you look at your profile, you think, what's yours look like? It's important. So I'm looking, starting to look down these, and I can go through pages and pages of these. Now, just remember, I've got no keywords. Let's see what happens when I add a few keywords. My goodness, I just put design and robotics, and now I'm down to 24, which means that really two thirds of people missed out because they failed to put the words design and robotics in their profile. And that's fine if they don't want a job in design and robotics, but if they did, that's actually quite sad, isn't it? So just be wary of that. So the next thing I do is I scan through an openly appealing profile. Again, just looking at that previous screen where I've just got a few lines. And I'm looking for, on, the, on those lines before, relevant technical focus. I'm looking for the experience, any experience they have, and I'm looking for no typos. You'll be amazed how many CVs I see with terrible typos. I've seen curriculum spelt wrong so many times you wouldn't believe. So this is the screen I'm looking at. So you can see, I'm looking at Jesse, for example. He describes himself as a mechatronics engineer. He's worked for GlidePath until 2020. Before that, he worked at a hotel and he, he was educated at the University of Technology, or the University of AUT. So I don't know terribly much about it. Again, Nancy, she, I know where she works now. I can see a couple of past roles, one in robotics and then one just in tuition. And she, she's been educated in Auckland and, and Korea. 
So it's all I know. My choice is that at this stage, do I open this profile to see more? So I open up the appealing profiles. So this is what they look like. Now, I'm going to scan through a few very quickly. And on the right hand side, I've written some notes as to what my first impressions are. And bear in mind that on that profile on my screen, I can typically only see the top half. But look at this guy. He's, he's got a black and white photo. That's kind of cool. He's put quite a good little summary in here. He's been a private tutor. Uh, and then he worked for, uh, I think it's like a food company in Hobsonville. But I put that out down there. I think he looks cool, smart. He's multidisciplined. He's mentioned that very quickly up on his profile. Let's go through a few quickly. Yeah, focused. He's not looking. He doesn't seem to be interested. Not much up here. This one here, Ariana. She loves to design. She said, it. I love to design. And she wins things. Look, there she's getting an award. First impressions, probably pretty good. Lawrence Pasquale. Look at that. He's into, I can see by the photo, he's into community, robotics, and agriculture. Now, for this job, I'll be thinking, bingo, I want to get in touch with this guy. Next one, this guy, he's into sports, sports technologist, sports tech and sports itself. He's a PhD, probably not what I'm looking for just for this quick robotics job. Move on. Jeremy, oh, I don't know what he looks like. He had a chance there to have a happy photograph. He didn't use it, uh, but he has mentioned he's in his final year. He has something to do with the printed circuit boards, but not much there to, to go on. And we have PhD in 3D printing. Great photo, great photo. First impressions, fantastic mentoring but phd not what i'm looking for keep on going jared my goodness look at that what a great photo bit of character and industrial so you can see the sort of things i see and i'm thinking do i click on do i see more okay i'm digging deeper now i'm looking for technical technical focus there's a theme going through here for the roles that i generally do i'm looking especially at the early years i'm looking for technical focus i'm not looking for someone who just can do the job or would do the job I'm looking for someone who wants to do that job for a long time. Genuine interest. So why are they interested? I still remember talking to a candidate one time. He said he was interested in um, EVs, you know, electric vehicles. And I said, so um, so was everyone else. He said, but I've got an RX-7 outside, which I converted to electric. Would you like to take a ride? And I thought, wow, that's impressive. Experience and progress. Experience and progress. Yes, I know as a graduate, you don't have much experience. You may not. Holiday jobs, if they're relevant, get them in there. Even if they're not, I love to see progress. You worked at a supermarket, you're promoted to supervisor. You worked on a, on a site layer, you're promoted to some sort of supervisor or something. Uh, recommendations, when people offer you recommendations, that's when someone says, says um, when someone says, uh, Lachlan uh, did a great job for us in recruitment. We would use them again, time and time again. Fantastic, I'll put that bold so you know. A couple of other ones, activity. Just getting involved on LinkedIn and commenting. But do it genuinely. Don't just say, great. Try and make a comment. Or even do your own postings. Now, we won't deal with that today, but I would mention that. And then I would say complementary skills. What do I mean by that? In this job, I've got farming, I've got robotics. If someone is really interested in, let's say, um, fruit had worked on a fruit picking company designing fruit picking machines, well, that looks pretty interesting. Even if they did nothing with robotics, but that awareness of the industry is fantastic, very, very useful. They are the things I look for. So here I am digging deeper. But let's just go into the profile as I see here. Now, Jesse, I actually got in touch with him. I did ask his permission. It's all public information, but I did ask his permission. But this is what a profile generally typically looks like. And as you can see, there's different sections. They've all got names. Uh, and, and peculiar enough, not always the name at the top is the name of the section. For example, the about is often called the summary. But it's just the first section has the photo and the contact details and any media links. Media links, portfolios to you and me. Summary, that's where the gold is for me. Experience, you can't dictate experience, but you can write your own summary. Education, always important for professional tasks, jobs. Skills, I've mentioned that before. Any certificates you've got. Down here, recommendations and endorsements. They're two separate things, uh, but they are worth having recommendations as, as before, if someone recommends you, gives you a proper recommendation. Endorsements is against a particular skill. So if you're fantastic at SolidWorks, 
someone says, I, I can verify that that uh, that Ali was great at uh, SolidWorks, maximum rating, fantastic. Groups and following. Groups are company or things you're organized. If you were in the, the farm robotics group and you were following companies that did that, that's excellent. That's a good sign for me that you're genuinely interested. But that's what a general profile looks like. Digging a little bit deeper here with Jesse. What do I know? Now I've gone into the public profile. You might have noticed before then I didn't have my the top of my profile was slightly different because that was a recruiter profile. This is a public profile. Slightly different. You don't need to know. All you need to know is that employers uh, will typically look at this. So what do I see here? Quickly, I don't see much about Jesse, but I see here it's open to work, and that's the most important thing. And then there's a bit of a summary there. Not an overwhelming summary, I have to say, and the experience will deal with deal with that later. So I'm still looking through. Now I dig down a bit more. I'm looking now at the summary. And what I'm looking for, focus, interest, experience, and seniority. Some people might come back and graduate as mature students, so they may have 20, 30, 40 years in the business before they graduate. So they would also come up on this list, so I want to see where they stand. Uh, and then their experience. Again, experience, focus, their career path, and any progress that they're making. Okay, so um, also I did notice just a little typo there, tiny little typo. That's forgiven. Why? Because I know he knows how to spell photographer because it's spelled correctly there. But that's more of an eye for detail matter. Then we're down to skills. I mentioned before complementary skills. I'm not going to go over that again. But I'm also looking for special and bonus skills. Remember language. Now I noticed here for Jesse, technical robotics, you know, web development. So he's quite geeky, but wildlife conservation, public speaking, and conservation issues. That's an interesting thread and could be useful for these. As well, next thing down is certificates, focus and self-motivation. By focus, I mean focus on the sort of industry that I'm recruiting for. If, that, if, it was, if it's a, a course about tiddlywinks or playing chess or something, that's not relevant to me. But self-motivation is a good indicator of self-motivation. We don't expect people to have their own life, engineering to be their total life. For some it is, but for many, I like to see balance. In this case, Jesse, conservation planning, project planning, scientific ex expeditions. I think we know the direction that Jesse's going. Now, Jesse has got no recommendations or endorsements, uh, but I am looking at, in terms of the companies and the, and the groups he's joined for genuine interest again. Also, as a recruiter, I have a sneaky look to see how many other recruiters they've connected to. Um, I might suggest that if you have made a few applications, just be careful of listing 20 different recruiters because as a recruiter, I want to be first in. And if there's another 20 listed there, I know I'm not. Uh, recommendations. Now, I had to pull this from another profile. This is from a guy, Rami, I just looked at his profile. He really went to town on his recommendations and he had some fantastic stuff. Look at this long one here. This is from someone who was, who was their boss in Spain. This is another one in New Zealand. What a lovely combination. And that's just gold. If we we're looking for someone for a senior position, we'd love to speak to this guy. So we're looking for the, the tasks. If any, any outline, any insight to the tasks, useful. Any special talents, who the referee is. If the referee is someone well known or, or quite high up in the industry, great. And again, progress. Okay, so what are my first priorities? Because at this stage, you're thinking, oh, too many things to think about. And I absolutely, I, I, I will understand you. So I've highlighted here the most important things that I look at in the profile. First of all, just the name, okay? Then I look at the location. Uh, this question asked there before about the, 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 the location. Try and keep it relatively general. LinkedIn does push you into certain things. Try not to be too specific. If it's if you're in Auckland or North Shore and you're happy living work in the CBD, just put Auckland if you can. Uh, open to work. That's a new feature coming relatively recently. That'll be in, in, there'll be a link in the settings showing you how to do that. The summary. That's where the gold is, and the headline. Okay, the other two things that you can change. Education, obviously, if I'm looking for someone for research, a PhD could be interesting. But again, the experience. And we're going to dig down to all of these, but these are the most important things. And on the next slide is the next things. I've just dashed those out. So background photos, the photos, skills and endorsements, uh, certificates, groups, and stuff like that. But if you've got those first ones just back here, 
Uh, that's the most important. That's the sort of things you should have done by, by in, in two or three days' time. Make sure you get some of those done. Okay, moving right through. So what I'm looking through for my process is to find the person using the role and keywords. I open because of experience and focus. I select based on career path. I'll contact them, and if they come back to me, I'll interview them. That's generally how it works. Just think of that sequence and what I need, what I'm looking for at each stage. To get selected, they have to have the right career path. To get opened, they have to have some sort of experience and focus. Okay. So, this is the next part. This is how to win. Now, remember, the um, in terms of winning, now my job as a recruiter is to find not just a person able to do the job. My job is to find the person to, who's best for that company. One, they can solve the problem. Number two, they're going to be a good fit for the company. And number three, they've got enough interest that's going to keep them staying there. So those are important. So for those people who say, well, would you help me get a job? Well, bear in mind that my job is to find interest, to find what your interest is. And if you haven't got that interest, then you're probably not the right person. The important thing for you to do is establish what your areas of interest are, even if there's two or three of them, and then put a frame around that. So I'm going to go through the, this. Okay. Um, so let's go on. So, and I'm going to dig down some examples in a minute. But the first key thing is name. Your name should be consistent. And there's another thing you can do later on, which I'll show you. You can actually record your name. Okay. So if your name is, is hard to pronounce, Here's a fantastic chance right on LinkedIn, you can enter your name. The headline, the job title, it has to be relevant. I'm not going to look for a farmer for this design role. That's going to be a design engineer. It's probably going to be either mechanical or it's going to be mechatronics. So it's going to be relevant. Uh, and what do you do if you can't, if you haven't worked in a job with that title? You can add it in your summary. You can say, I'm looking for a role as a mechatronics engineer. Location. Now, location, I can see a couple of questions about locations, but one thing I would advise is one, keep it within the area you're happy to work in, but also if it doesn't match your last role, just be careful of that one because I have had people who say their current role, the one they're still working on, is in Brisbane, but they have put their address as being in Hamilton. That's a problem because I don't know where they are. And while I'm thinking about that, I'll probably pop and have a look at the next candidate. Education. Education is an important one. If you've done a degree, generally speaking, the BE Electrical, the BE Mechatronics, the BE Civil, you'll also often have a bit of a focus. So show what your focus is. If you're civil, structural, or hydrology, or, or, or geotech, then put that on there. If you've done a master's, tell us a bit about your paper, if it's relevant. If it's a bit of a red herring, then don't put it in there. But if it's all to do, if it's relevant to your focus of your, of your business or of your, of your career, then put it in. So let's just delve down through to say a few more specifics. Okay, let's pick on Jesse again. He's a nice bloke, he doesn't deserve this, but I'm just gonna be take a specific example. Jesse, uh, his last name, he had Jesse Z or ZW. There's a challenge because I want to know if I've seen this guy before. I want to know if he's had a chat with me two years ago looking for a holiday job. I will also want to know if I can search and find a bit more about him. But, but I can't with this. Secondly, how do I enter in my, him in my database? Do I call him Mr. ZW? It's a bit of a problem. It sounds rude. It's not. Also, some names can be a bit confusing. Sometimes with Spanish names where they have double surnames. That can be a bit confusing as to how we enter them in the database. So just bear that in mind, and whatever you choose, try to be consistent. Now, I mentioned before that you can record your name. Now, this is my profile, handsome brute, aren't I? And um, you'll see below my name, there's a little new thing, just come up recently, it says record your name pronunciation. So my name, Lachlan McNeil, it has a number of pronunciations, Lachlan, Lachlan, La, whatever, quite a few things. So I could use that to, to, uh, to pronounce my name. But it's 10 seconds long. So why don't we use it for something more? What can you do in 10 seconds? Hi, my name is Lachlan McNeil. I'm a technical recruiter, and I look forward to helping your company find great people in New Zealand. And I've still got three seconds left. So what could you do with your audio? 
One, you can show your clear English pronunciation. Number two, you can show you, we can read out your name. And number three, you can just pop a bit extra in there, inviting people to get in touch with you. Now, this, here's the headline. I've gone through the headline now. The headline is where you describe your job. Here's an important thing. If you're currently employed, generally speaking, your current role name will be the same as this headline on the top. But if you're not, you can be whatever you like. You could call yourself, you know, chief car washer or whatever. So Jenny here has taken the example of, of, you, of putting in that she's got three years experience. And then, then I think, oh, she had three years experience. So she's come up with my graduate, but she's got three years experience. It could be interesting. Mechatronics engineer with three years experience actively seeking opportunities in Auckland. Well, she's answered a couple of my questions already. And then I have to look further down, down here in her bio. So normally I, I might skip past, but it's got here about. She's put a space here, which also means I have to see more. And of course, I've got to click on, don't I? Yes, please. She says she's looking for opportunities. She's in Auckland. She's got three years' experience. Why shouldn't I? And as well as that, I mentioned activity before. She's made a couple of comments on somebody. Look, congratulations, Kylie! Exclamation mark. Keep up the amazing work. So Jenny is positive as well as being smart. Love it. Now, how to win? Let's look at the headlines I see. This is a, just a real screenshot shot of what I look to see. Jesse, poor old Jesse. This he says mechatronics engineer. How much more could he do with this? Hayden, uh, he is, has his own business. He's got, got, he's got director at Visu. Now, Visu, do I search for that? I can't find the company. Uh, I assume he's got his own business. Uh, Lucia doesn't hasn't actually put anything. Now, I don't know if she just doesn't know how to use LinkedIn or she's not interested, but it doesn't really give the best of impression. Now, Farah, he's a smart guy. He's working as a mechatronics engineer. He's a PhD candidate. But he's also tells me right in that line what he's interested in. Sports technologist, innovator, researcher, and engineer. Fantastic. Omkar, final year student. He's told me, if I'm interested in a biotech engineering student, well, I know I'm a year ahead. I can make contact with them now to get him as a great as a great graduate graduate. So what a what a what a bunch of clever people we've got there. Okay. So we talked before about the summary, the about section. We just had a glance at a couple there before. Um, so, uh, um, so we've, first of all, what should the summary do? That's the this is about. It should say who you are really early in the process. Now, you'll see, I'll, I'll point out some great profiles which don't do that, but these are people who are probably gainfully employed. When you're looking for a role, I want to see really quickly in that profile. And I recommend you start your sentence with something like a graduate mechatronics engineer with you know two months experience in robotics or a background in in agriculture or something, and then put the meat on the bones after that stage. So I can look really quickly and see who you are. What career stage? You may be a mature, a mature graduate, so you can say I've returned to the university and studied engineering after being a, a, a farmer for three years or 10 years. Our professional interests. Now, you'll see here, I've got the top two lines, but the next one's underlined here. So let's, so and I've underlined them because that's the thing most people miss out. Okay, so uh, when you when, the, when you those things, when, when you miss them out, that means there's an opportunity for you as a graduate to, to shine amongst everyone else. Professional interests. I am interested in robotics. My career ambitions. My ambition is to become an excellent design engineer. I'm also interested in, in nature and conservation. I'm open to roles in anywhere in New Zealand. I'm open to a design role and I would happily work on remote or contract positions. I've, I've got someone here, Jesse just commented, is there a risk of writing too much for, for your about summary? If you separate into paragraphs, no. And you, what we'll notice is that your eye, or my eye, is drawn to the top line, left-hand side of, the, of that paragraph. So each paragraph should mean something, mean something different, but you, it, it takes a bit to not write something that's too long. Uh, but as long as it actually says something useful. Here's an example of a short, sweet graduate profile. 
So he's got a background picture, he's got a photograph, he says what he is, graduate student at Northwest, Northwestern University, biomedical engineering. If you just put your Northwestern University, then I might skip over. And then on his about, he's put more details there. And he's put not any what he's doing, but what he's looking for. And he's looking for something the same. He's put a CV. Now, um, I'll, I'll go over CVs later on, uh, but just to think carefully before you put your CV on there. Oh, here's a note. Be very careful with buzzwords. Bear in mind that I'm searching for the people that meet my key param parameters. Uh, they may tend to be technical, but I'm not gonna search for driven, motivated, passionate first. That comes at interview. I generally look for the technical things first, and I always say the technical is the key to the door. I will not search for a, a passionate mechatronics engineer over and above someone who has interest in agriculture or robotics. And the words I often see is hard worker, passionate, creative, quick learner, natural leader. Um, I'm afraid if I'm putting you into a company and you have zero years experience, and I'm putting you amongst people who may have 20, 25 years experience, some of these things are just a little bit hard, and I recommend that people be very, very careful when they're putting these in. Uh, as I said here, we de determine those at interview. Uh, your experience. Now, we mentioned experience before, and I'm going to dig down a little bit here because this is another area uh, and where, where this thing's missed. As you see, the top four, that's those four, top four points, job, title, department, company, company and dates. That's standard, that's the minimum experience listing you can do. But the, the areas where people absolutely miss out, and this is also in CVs, I see a lot of this happening, is they miss out describing the company. The assumption is that everybody knows the company they work for and what that company does. First of all, People probably do not know that company. And secondly, you may work for a department in that country, that company that does something, or that company may be doing something we don't know about. So I have companies that work in automation and, uh, and superconductors, for example, in New Zealand. Well, they're two very different areas. So there's an opportunity. And then the role description, what actually did you do? The assumptions, if someone said they're a project engineer, that could mean a multitude of things. The scope of a project engineer could be huge. And then include details of non-engineering roles. Let's dig down. So here's Jesse's profile. He's put experience, mechatronics engineer, glide path group, internship. Then he's put six months in Auckland. That's the minimum he had to do. And then he's put here product development and innovation department. Now, I don't know what he was doing in that, in that department. He could have been leading the whole department into war, he could have been designing the latest rocket ship, he could have been making the tea, I don't know. And then he worked as an operations coordinator and guest services, nice complete title, and my hotel. What sort of a place is my hotel? Is that a one-man business, a, a husband and wife bed and breakfast, or is it a huge chain? That makes a difference. And then he worked there for three months in Auckland. He was a freelance real estate photographer. Uh, for, for, for a number of months, but what he did, he, was he photographing engineering or nature or something else? So let's let's have a look at an example of somebody who's gone the other extreme, who's gone way to town. Let's look at Stephen. Stephen is an architect in Wellington. Now Stephen shows the role, there's the, standard, there's the standard stuff at the top, but look at what he's done, qualifications, professional experience. He's listed a lot of, you've got some right, really good insight as to what Stephen's been involved with this, with this role. As well as that, he's put some examples. Now, just think how much better that looks than looking back at this profile. And I'm not pointing the finger at Jesse because many, many graduates uh, profiles look just like this. So let's look at Stephen. My only comment is Stephen refers him to, self, uh, to himself in the third person that's saying Stephen did this. I don't say Lockham did this, I say I did this. So I recommend you use the first person. So he should say, I gained a Master of Architecture. Okay, that's my only comment. As well as that, also, where is education? Many people just put Masters of Architecture, but there he is, he's put medium density housing. He specifically dug down as to what he did it for and why, why he wants to be, what he wants to be an architect and what he wants to work on. There is no doubt at all of this guy's career, career direction. So, uh, gold star to Steve. Now, what would I have done with Jesse's profile? Well, this is what I would have done. So let's just click back to 
that's his profile there. I downloaded it and I just put a couple of things here. I put, that's exactly the same, but I put description of glide path. I just went to the website, copied and pasted it there and then modified it just to make it my own. I did for the core information. And then a little in the second paragraph, just a bit about the role. And there's another chance to get some of those keywords in there. You, you find sometimes that all the keywords aren't in there. But if you if you can, just uh, just try try and fill them in from here. So AutoCAD, CAD. In this case, I'd be looking for SolidWorks or Creo or Inventor or something like that. Again, the hotel job. My hotel is a chain of what. Well, that dot dot dot. That's when you Google the company, find more about them, and you show you you list things that put this job in context. And then again, in this role, I had to coordinate room changes, laundry, and restocking with five permanent staff. Now, he would have Jesse, the imaginary Jesse here, had said this involved early starts and meticulous planning. Do you see what he's done there? He's popped some skills in there without having to list them. Yeah, uh, and so uh, and so and the use of the CRM. So I've got oh, a bit of tech CRM, meticulous planning, and early starts. And he hasn't even said that's what I'm good at. He said that's the, what the role role required. So fantastic. Uh, freelance real estate photographer. Again, I worked in holidays for a number of state agents. I don't know if he did or not, but I made this up. I have, and also, he's I used my own car and equipment plus a professional drone. Fantastic. Uh, someone's a nerman has just asked to write the profile as a first person or third person. Write it as a first person. Okay, uh, that's that's like Steve. Don't say Steve did this. I don't say Lachlan is a technical recruiter with 17 years experience. I say I'm a technical recruiter with 17 years experience. So first person. Uh, back into the freelance here again. Use any opportunity you can to add keywords and also sneaky little Jesse. He's put in there. I have a keen interest in nature photography and visit many remote locations. OK, uh, so, you know, you can see how that is so much more informative when showing career focus. Uh, Fahabib says, do we have to put the company context even for bigger engineering companies? Uh, yes, you might, because you're more likely to work for a small department of that. If it's Becker, for example, uh, you, we, I want to know that, that you worked in the structural department uh, as opposed to the, the horizontal civil infrastructure department. So quite different. OK, let's move along. Now the profile picture, profile picture, uh, okay, the obvious thing, not a silly one, this is not Facebook, this is not TikTok, okay, but also you find in many cases, and especially in the US, that photos can be very formal, studio shots like that or whatever. In New Zealand, Australia, we're a bit more casual, we like to see a bit of character coming through, but don't be, don't be too silly on it. Uh, ideally showing a bit of action, and I don't mean jumping off a bridge. What I mean is just something a little bit, bit of dynamic. Uh, recognizable, recognizable. Here's a question I sometimes say to, people say to me, well, we've heard that you don't put uh, photos on anything uh, because people might discriminate. First of all, I've had more clients asking me for people outside their normal uh, demographic ever in the last two years than any other time. So that could be an advantage if you are uh, outside the normal demographic. But secondly, is that people want to recognize you. I often, if I go to Auckland, we don't have an office in Auckland. So if I go to Auckland, I'm gonna meet someone. How do I know what they look like? I looked on LinkedIn and I put that on my phone. And when I meet them, I know what they look like. So that's important. Also, it's a great chance for you to show your best. Uh, just a tip, try and look toward, towards the center of the screen. Uh, of the of the body, it's just one of those little photography things. It just makes you look a bit more interested in what what you're de de demonstrating. Okay, so here's an example. I've only got one example. Henri. So Henri is in Chicago. Just he's got no background photograph. His photograph. Look at it. It's upbeat. It's from his Facebook. But who cares? It's just great. And also he's got the old click button. So it's almost encouraging you to click on. So cheerful. He's got that. The, the, the isolated background using blur, that's a smart thing to do as well. Okay, uh, Paula says a bit of action. I guess this is what I'm meaning. It's just not sitting in a studio, not sitting in a studio. Now, you, when you look at the profiles previously, you saw the guy with the on the industrial site with the helmet, someone on a boat, just use your own initiative. And it's just, you, you can go to town a little bit here, as long as it's not stupid, as long as it's not silly. Okay, so that's what I would say. Okay, the background picture, we've seen a couple of examples before. 
And so, so first of all, why bother? Well, bear in mind, the whole point of this is to stand out, okay? Not to be one of the crowd. Your job is to stand out so people think, let's have a look at you. It provides insight. So if someone is interested in conservation and robotics, and they have a photograph of a, an agricultural robotic robot on their profile, fantastic. But I'll show you some examples. Now, also, it shows the sector they work in, uh, and, and as well, any talent they've got. They might be something, could be something artistic, and any flair they've got in the area. And of course, most importantly, it attracts my eye. Here's an example. Now, I'm disappointed to say that I couldn't find any graduate engineers with any background photographs. So here, Andrew's got a great photograph, a bit of action. Uh, who was talking about a bit of action before? Um, so Paula. So there, I mean, that's not running around, but at least it shows out doing something as opposed to being in a studio. But no context. Now, Sylvester, again, He's obviously doing something, he's enjoying himself, but no background photographs. So let's look at some examples of what background photographs would look like. This is the chief of staff to the CEO at Uber. And look at that. There's a drone shot uh, uh, looking down and you can see a car winding around a road. Fantastic. Now, you can, there's a whole bunch in the library at LinkedIn, but you can make your own. They've got specifications for the photograph size and you can make your own. I don't encourage you to do that especially in engineering, because what a great way to stand out. Yeah, this is Lisa. Now, Lisa works in sales, but we know that Lisa doesn't sell rubber duckies. She doesn't sell property. She sells in the data. She's got a picture of a, of a, of a data center, and there it is, Federal Government Data Network. How do I, what do I, if I was looking for someone to work in, in maybe recruitment in data centers, I, I'm drawn to that because it says data center first, and sales next. Think about it. Here's Paige. Paige, now look at this page here. I've got a picture immediately I know the industry before I even look at Paige herself. But down here it says intelligence, research, logistics, computing. I would think she'd be a geek sitting in a cubicle, but no, look at that. That picture absolutely puts it in context. Now, remember I said before about the photograph looking towards the action. Now, you notice here that Paige is looking away. It just seems that she's maybe staring to the distance. She's not that interested. So in that case, you really want to get Paige looking towards, sort of down towards the center of the screen there. Just, a, just slightly. Bob McIntosh. Now, Bob McIntosh is a LinkedIn, a bit of a LinkedIn guru. So he knows his stuff. Without even looking at the words, you know what he's about. He's about people, relationships. And again, he's got a nice photograph with a faded background so you can see what he looks like. And he looks kind of happy without being too cheesy. Okay, here's somebody who works for a company I used to work for, the Buchan Group, Arno Peters. So Arno has taken the taken the, the initiative to actually draw his own background image. Now he is a design architect. Now I recruit for architecture, and generally speaking, there's two types of architects. There's design architects who come up with the creative concepts and there's project architects who tend to be more involved in the construction. There is no doubt that, that, that Arno is a design architect. Secondly, I, my eye was drawn to Arno and then I looked at the summary here. Just read this for a bit. I aspire to be a Renaissance man, a polymath, a jack of all trades, and a master of many. What a great start for a profile. And consider that many of them just say architect. So there's some, there's some point. There's a point for you. Okay. So what are we talking about here? Let's look at all the stages. We've got, the first thing to do is be found. So you've got to make sure you include your keywords. So think of all the keywords someone would want for the roles that you want. Think of my mechatronics engineer. I've got agriculture. I would use horticulture. I'd use robotics. I'd use automation. I'd use Auckland. I would use design. I'd use CAD. All of those words, think them through thoroughly. And if in doubt, add them in. Cover the different job titles. There's the next point. Now, if you haven't worked as a mechatronics engineer, I've mentioned this before, try and pop it into your about. I'm open to a role as a mechanical engineer or a mechanical designer. So you get those phrases in your profile. So when I search for mechanical engineer, up you come to. 
work your headline. You saw how a couple of people there have really worked that headline. That's the job title, but there's a lot more opportunity for there. And also, as, as, as I mentioned before, be open to opportunities. There's a setting, there'll be a link coming through showing you how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, it's just that's just getting a job 101. Okay, next stage, don't get screened out. So what things get people screened out? I'm, so, I'm afraid to say typos and poor grammar, especially for roles that require report writing. For design, for design roles, not necessarily so much, but if I consistently see poor spelling or grammar, then I'm skipping over. Avoid ambiguous locations. I've mentioned that before. If your last role finishes in Brisbane and you say you're still working there, uh, but you're in Hamilton, then mention you, that you're working remotely, just so it's obvious, because if I'm looking for someone in Hamilton, then I want to make sure that you're there as well. I have occasionally run people up to find that they're not even in the country. So I'm quite aware of that one. Avoid over-ambitious claims and aims. You may have fantastic ambitions, but your LinkedIn profile is a time when you want people to take you on as a graduate, not as a CEO. So just remember that. And aims, claims and aims. I had a, one person who had seven months experience telling me he had a vast experience in all areas of civil engineering. Seven months. I was putting in front of people who had 35 years. Just think about that carefully. Provide info on yourself and your situation. Mention your professional interests and aims and ask for feedback. Now, of course, if someone hasn't approached you when you don't even know if someone's looking, then how do you ask for feedback? Just ask for feedback. I mean, I quite often get asked for feedback, but ask for feedback, ask from your friends, maybe from your tutors and say, what do you think of that? And you want proper constructive criticism. You don't want them telling you it's great. You don't want them telling you it's rubbish. Does it reflect you? Does it show your interest? Does it come up in the right searches? So do ask for feedback. Stand out. How do you stand out? This is the bit that I enjoy doing. I love seeing great background images. We saw some good ones there. A good profile photograph. Uh, work portfolios. This is something I haven't delved into, but you saw how Stephen before had some images there. There's a whole featured section. Now you can add your work portfolios. And as graduates, you absolutely should put the most professional stuff you have on there. So samples of your CAD drawings, maybe some prototypes you've done, pictures of you out on site, just get them in there. It's fantastic. I mentioned here whether your CV or not. Now, as a, as a recruiter, I don't like it when people put their CVs on there because it just means that any company, including the company I could be recruiting for, and sometimes I'm recruiting for a number of other, with a number of other, other um, recruiters, so we're in competition. If that CV's been sitting on a profile, I don't know who's seen it. So I might skip to the next person because I want to get a unique candidate. The next three points we've, we've mentioned. Demonstrate interest in companies and roles and provide evidence of your direction. That career focus and direction is a theme. That's what I'm looking for. Now ask for recommendations, especially from employers. Just do it. Uh, we can probably, you can see some examples of how to ask for recommendations. My suggestion is to give a sample uh, and, and go to a, a previous employer and say, uh, hi, hi Bob, look, I'm, I am looking for a role. Could you recommend me on LinkedIn? This is what somebody else has said. And put a link through and let them recommend you. Fantastic. So the last stage, and this is the last bit here, is to reach out. Now, we're not going to go into it in this webinar because there's never enough time. But when you are sending a letter to somebody, I received one only two days ago from an engineer in Westport, a Canadian, uh, and he came and said to me, look, I'm, I'm interested in staying in New Zealand. Here's a link to my LinkedIn profile. Easy. I didn't need a CV. Fantastic. And of course, put a link on your CV. Some people say, don't do that. I love it because sometimes I'm looking at CVs that might be seven or eight years old, and I can click on the link and find what they're doing now. It's always up to date. So um, so and now, now what I mentioned before that I'm only dealing with setting your LinkedIn profile up, but the, there are things coming soon. We're gonna be how do you respond to in-mails. Now in-mails are LinkedIn emails, so an internal email system, and I use them a lot. In-mail, how to in-mail potential employers directly. 
That's a great thing. Once you've got a good profile, you can start to do that and then getting active on LinkedIn. It's like Facebook, but it's very much towards business careers. So there's a real opportunity for you to get yourself seen. So to wrap it up, we've got a checklist. I do suggest you looked at the LinkedIn help section. Check out other people's profiles. They're all on there for you to see. Start with the basics. Get those basics, get the headline, get the job title, get the summary done, and then you can start to add the next level. Um, if you're going to approach people with your profile, do make sure you get to the next level. Please, please, please check your spelling, grammar, and formatting. If you do all of these, you're in the top 10% already. So fantastic. So I'm just going to look through a few questions here. If you like this, have a quick look at that. Um, I, I, I'll look at a, a profile, I'll look at it later on. Um, let's have a look. Uh, can you put the desired job title in the headline? As long as you, as I said, says, can you put job, the desired job title? Yes, you can. But if you said you're looking for, that's more important. I would say, don't say, don't say, for example, robotics design engineer. Um, I would say you're looking for a role as a design engineer. It's not that it's wrong. I, I wouldn't chuck people out for that. But it's sometimes just a bit, uh, a little bit, a bit sneaky. Okay. Um, oh, great. Thanks, Mark. Great. Pleased to find you find that helpful. Um, uh, do they, in New Zealand, do they consider mature roles or graduate roles uh, plus four years experience? Uh, probably not, but you need to build on that experience. If your experience is outside the, the key area, uh, less so. Uh, so what I mean by that is if you've done four years working um, at McDonald's, then they'll probably consider you as a graduate, but they want to be very, very sure of your career direction. Um, is premium essential? No, no, not at all. Um, do you need to respond to all my emails? Felix says, yeah, well, look, when you respond to emails, it's really important. Um, I, I get four responses or five responses from a typical email, and it might be telling me about a specific role. Uh, I, I, I get people who say, yes, I'm interested, and then I arrange an interview with them. I get people who say, well, I'm I, I, it does sound interesting, but it's not for me at the moment. I'll be in my next contract for the next uh, six months, but please keep in touch. I get people who decline, and they go, I get those people who just don't respond. So now the people who decline, just one thing you have to remember is that I can't go back to you and say, oh, actually, look at your profile. I've got a better job for you. So if you're a graduate, I wouldn't decline. But you can say, it's not for me at the moment. It's a really good thing to do. And just not reply. It's kind of a little bit sloppy. And it's, it, this is a professional environment. OK. Um, oh, lots of thank you. That's nice, nice, nice to hear. Uh, for Vanessa, for the six months I work two to three days, work my usual position in two to three, two to three days a week in another department. How shall I include this? Just show the dates at the same time. You can do that. Um, what else is there? Should the background be blurred in our LinkedIn profile? Um, the background of your photograph. Now it's up to you as long as it doesn't confuse the picture. So I would suggest if you can, it's a good thing to do. Most modern phones do that. Um, uh, Nor uh, Norman says. Uh, at what stage do recruiters dig into LinkedIn profile when it's interesting? When I'm looking through and I see hints that this person's interested in agriculture, I go through, have a look there. Um, LinkedIn Elevate, no, I don't have any thoughts on that. I, I just use the, the um, I, I just tend to use the LinkedIn recruiter package. Um, to John Lee, uh, personal branding and activity section. We'll go, uh, personal branding, Possibly, but certainly on terms of the activity, yes, we'll be we'll be getting onto that soon. All right, is there any questions I've missed? Let's have a look. Locations, that's right, I'm going through those. How is being active on LinkedIn measured not to be over or under active? Um, just look at other people. Just look for someone who maybe is two to three years ahead of you. Look what they put on there. It scrolls through. So if someone's active, it just goes down. I've, I've written heaps of stuff and commented heaps and heaps of time. It just it's like a window. I only see the top bit. It can be being act, as active as you need to. So, oh, thank you. That's good to see people are finding this useful. I think I've answered pretty much most of those questions. I think as we go. So. 
I'd to say thank you very much and thank you very much for Natasha for having me on this web webinar. Oh, thank you so much. Um, it's been a really insightful webinar and I think I speak for everyone where I feel like there's always been a few useful tips that we can take home and edit our LinkedIn profile with. Um, I just want to re-remind everyone that this event has been recorded and it will be shared along with the slides in the next few days. We've also got a survey that's attached and I encourage you to fill it out because that will help us understand if there's a need for a follow-up event or if there's some area that was covered today that you would like more detail about. You'll also be able to send any questions that may have been missed um, and we can get those answered for you. Another thing to remember is that a great way to build up your LinkedIn is to go to networking events. So I encourage you all to check out our website for networking opportunities in your region. Um, it's good to connect with the branch and young engineers and make those connections. Uh, and also you can find us on LinkedIn as well and also see any updates happening in our social media page. Um, but like I said before, thank you so much, Lachlan. It's been really helpful. And we hope to do another follow-up event very soon. But to help us do that, we need that survey completed from the audience. So um, we'll turn off our cameras and we'll end the seminar now. Uh, if you do have any questions that have been missed, please get in contact uh, and reply to the follow-up email going in the next few days. Thank you.